New reports say that Israel is striking Iranian targets in Iraq. The goal of the attacks is to destroy and disrupt Iranian supply lines to Syria and new missile sites that can hit Israel. And we have an I-24 exclusive. Satellite images of an Iranian tanker off the coast of Syria shows that a political and environmental threat is in slow motion there. The images show a tanker which appears to be leaking oil as it seeks to avoid global sanctions on Iran's oil trade. And President Trump not only refusing to back down, he is doubling down on his sharp criticism of Baltimore and the elected officials responsible for the city's troubles. From the I-24 News Studio in Times Square in New York, this is Clear Cut Plus with Michelle McCory. Welcome everyone and thank you for watching. Iranian military positions inside Iraq have been coming under increasing attack. And Arab media is reporting that Israel is responsible for those attacks. Now, there's no official confirmation from Israel, but Israel has been striking Iranian forces and militia in Syria. If true, the reported F-35I's missions would represent a sharp escalation of Israeli attacks on Iranian forces, and it would mark the first Israeli strikes in Iraq since the bold bombing in 1981 that took out Saddam Hussein's burgeoning nuclear program. I-24 News defense correspondent Jonathan Regev has the story. Another front in the clandestine war between Israel and Iran. Reports in Arabic language daily Ashark al Awsat say at least two strikes on Iranian targets in Iraq recently were carried out by Israel. One was an attack by Israel Air Force F-35s earlier this month on a base housing Shia militias loyal to Iran. The other took place this week, targeting rocket launchers earlier transferred from Iran, this attack taking place in Camp Ashraf, north of the Iraqi capital Baghdad. The Israeli strike is possible. As they struck them in Syria and in Lebanon, it is very reasonable that they strike them in Iraq as well, because the militias have expanded their power and now they are able to take their arms to the Israeli border through Syria. Iranian entrenchment in the Middle East is a major concern for Israel, and not only when it happens in Syria. These marches may resemble those in Tehran or Beirut, but they're actually held in Baghdad. In such a reality, and with the Iraqi establishment still weak following years of civil war, Iran is constantly widening its footprints in its mostly Shia neighbor through its own army and local militias. Uh, These groups originate from Iran, and they think as the Iranians think. Same thinking. They want to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. That is their ideology. This issue was reportedly brought up in the trilateral meeting held in Jerusalem last month between the national security advisors of Israel, the United States and Russia. In the meeting, Israel expressed concerns not only about the Iranian presence in Syria and Lebanon, but also in Iraq. It was nearly three decades ago when missiles from western Iraq were launched towards Israel in the first Gulf War. The Iranian missiles today are far more sophisticated than the Iraqi Scuds in the early 90s, and Israel already seems to be acting against them. And that was I-24 defense correspondent Jonathan Regev reporting. An I-24 News exclusive now. Satellite images show an Iranian tanker leaking oil off the coast of Syria. Those satellite images reviewed by the intelligence website IntelliTimes show that the tanker is leaking oil into the sea just north of one of Syria's largest oil refineries. This discovery raises concerns that Iran is finding ways around global sanctions which are meant to cut off the supply of Iranian oil to Syria. Joining me now to discuss further, Matt Brodsky. He's a senior fellow with the Security Studies Group and Christopher Burgess, a national security analyst and a retired CIA official. Thank you both for being with us. Matt, let's start with you and our report showing that Iran has been violating sanctions against Syria now. This is separate from the JCPOA, the 2015 nuclear deal. So it's yet another example of Iran cheating on a deal. What kind of a response do you think we're going to get from the Europeans on this? That remains to be seen. We know that in, on July 4th, we had uh, the UK, which when they took in the Iranian ship near Gibraltar, uh, that was, of course, another Iranian sanctions-busting ship uh, full of oil that was headed towards Syria. It seems this one also was taking the route through the uh, Mediterranean Sea, as opposed 
to the Red Sea, which means that our allies, at least in Egypt and the Suez Canal, have been doing a better job if this turns out to be accurate. But a lot is depending on Europe right now, and we're in a very delicate uh, situation between Iran and the United States as it comes to pulling Europe to one side or the other. Chris, it does seem to be that Europe has been looking the other way on a number of fronts and violations. Uh, what is it going to take for the Europeans to finally change course and say, look, this isn't working, let's perhaps try join the United States, impose further sanctions, and that could get Iran to the table faster? I, I think uh, we're, we're seeing that play out now uh, with the uh, Iranians uh, taking over and hijacking the uh, British flagged uh, oil uh, tanker uh, last week. And the uh, UK is now escorting its flagged vessels through uh, the Straits of Hormuz. Uh, should the uh, Iran uh, IRGC Navy uh, attack another flagged vessel, say France uh, or another European ally, I think that uh, that will be the tipping point. Uh, the economic squeeze on the oil exports, a uh, report came out just yesterday that put it at about 100,000 barrels as comparison to when it used to be millions. And so the squeeze is uh, taking place on the Iranian economy right now. The squeeze is taking place, and yet uh, they still seem to have enough uh, of funds, Matt, to continue financing proxies and terrorist groups around the region, including some military bases in Iraq, which Israel has reportedly now taken out, at least according to Arab media reports. As we mentioned, there are reports that there have been Israeli strikes inside Iraq targeting Iranian ballistic missile shipments. How likely do you think it is that these reports are indeed accurate? I think it's I, very I likely, the uh, and, and the reason <laughs> ahead, is Matt. because <laughs> the reason uh, that I think that they're likely Israel, uh, who is behind these, is because the United States really doesn't go after Iran right now. They don't have a, uh, a, a any authorization for the use of force against uh, Iranian forces unless they are directly attacked. So we've seen the United States respond uh, to threats happening against them in Syria, like near the base at Tanf in the south. Uh, but we've seen Israel very successful in attacking these types of Iranian uh, military assets in Syria, enough so that it has, in fact, made Iran try to think of different ways to get these weapons to Hezbollah in Lebanon, but to also stop short of Syria and start storing these ballistic missiles inside of Iraq. So it's a big deal that uh, Israel would be behind it if that <laughs> turns out to be the case, that it was using its stealth fighter, also very important. So, Chris, do you concur? Do you think that it's likely that Israel was indeed behind this? And can we assume that this then, of course, comes with a, the silent consent, a nod and a wink from the United States? Uh, I, my, my vote is that it was Israel behind it. It's disrupting the supply chain to Hezbollah. It's disrupting the diversification of launch sites uh, to Iran. And uh, the nod and the wink from the United States, I don't think uh, it was uh, that covert. Uh, Israel has its right to uh, protect itself. But do you see this now further escalating tensions? How do you see Iran potentially responding to this? Uh, absolutely. I, I think you're going to uh, see them uh, double down and try to get uh, more armaments into Hezbollah. Uh Uh, to uh, fo foment uh, discontent along uh, the, the border there in Israel, as well as in Syria. Uh, remember, Syria is a lawless state still, and thus it, it, it is truly the, like the Wild West. And uh, the only card that uh, Iran has right now that they don't fully control is their own populace, because, as you mentioned, they have funds to uh, fund surrogates and fund other activities, but they don't have funds to keep their own populace in check when the, the goods start to tighten and uh, they become unrest. So I, I think they're gambling that they'll rise in support of uh, holding the West accountable as opposed to looking inward. Yeah, also interesting to point out that there are reports that Iran and Russia are planning a joint military drill in the Persian Gulf. That is at least according to a commander in the Iranian Navy. We'll see how that plays out. Chris Burgess, Matt Brodsky, appreciate it as always. All right, still ahead, President Trump. He's not letting go or back.